to this week's Facebook Live. Um, so I'm going to talk about this week's blog, which was all about cultivating self-love. And, um, you know, and a lot of people think that that's a pretty selfish thing to do. Um, they, uh, you know, they also think self-acceptance is a pretty selfish thing to do. There's a, there's a whole host of things that people think, you know, it's very narcissistic to, to have any sort of self-love for yourself. But I think they get the wrong connotation when they when we talk about um self-love and um, looking after yourself you know basic self-care and things like that that i'm always harping on about but you know self-love isn't narcissistic um it definitely isn't um in fact if you if you look at narcissistic personality disorder um, they don't really look after themselves they, they tend to end up with um addiction issues uh, so let's go on that's i'm, di I'm diverting there but we're going to talk about um so self-love so you know self-love it's a it means basically that we're holding our own well-being and happiness in high regard it means we're investing some time in ourselves looking after our basic self-care needs we're looking after ourselves instead of sacrificing our physical and mental health for others it doesn't mean that you're you're not you know helping others but you're doing it from a healthy base you have healthy boundaries in other words um you know we can cultivate self-love by taking some supports that are going to physically psychologically and spiritually you know support us um and we have to stop and think and say you know okay the longest relationship we're ever 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 going to have is with ourselves at the end of the day that's the longest relationship you'll ever have you will have relationships with other people and they will be within various degrees of that circle of trust um but it's it's with ourselves so you know um, treating ourselves with love and care should be our, our number one rule. We should come from that because, um, you know, when we're investing that, investing in self-love, um, we're investing in healthy boundaries. And that's, you know, that's what, what we're on about here. Um, and that investment then ripples out to others in the way we, we treat them. Um, because, you know, they benefit from us treating ourselves with love and care and trust and respect first and foremost and then that ripples out to them as well as i said we're coming from a healthier base and that's what self-love is all about but what happens when we don't have self-love when we neglect basically to look after our own well-being um, and as i said you know it's it's spiritual it's psychological um, and it's also physical um so you know this whole lack of self-love then can lead to physical and mental health issues um, we tend to be more self-critical. Anybody that has that negative, uh, you know, that negative critic going on in their head will tell you, you know, they have then have low self-confidence and self-worth. They are setting unhealthy boundaries. Um, our resilience are, tends to be lower as well. Um, and, and we can view any challenge or any stress, stressful situations that we, we encounter. Um, they, they seem more difficult. It's not to say that they're not difficult in and of themselves but we're our, our resilience is so low our self-confidence is so low we may have you know um anxiety or depression or or some other um mental health issue as a result because we're neglecting ourselves maybe we have physical health issues because we're neglecting ourselves so all those challenges can seem a bit more difficult um, we can also see like any simple mistake that we might make so we're second guessing ourselves and um, because those those simple mistakes can seem you know we're, we're making ourselves out to be failures um, and, and we really basically don't feel we have full control over our life that's what's going on here um, and um, you know as I said we could end up with sleep issues or you know it's it's not just psychological issues but you know sleep and um, stress and even burnout can happen um, so you know stopping and thinking about you know if you go go and have a look at the blog because i do list out some of the complications there of not having self-love for yourself see you know what those complications could be for yourself and then see okay why is this so important why is self-love and cultivating it why is it um so important if you review what you you can end up with and maybe you have some of them right now but it could get so much worse if you continue to mentally and physically neglect yourself um so you know stop and think what am i doing to myself um you know maybe you know that stress has been caused by 
me not self setting healthy boundaries with other people and a way to re-engage that is to actually um you know to cultivate um some self-love for myself so self-love is based upon creating small habits um that we can put into our daily life that adds up and i'm going to give you some um ideas today some ways that you can start doing it now i always say start small stop think start small um you know what can you fit into your lifestyle or maybe add in that you can then shove out the unhealthy stuff that you're doing um so don't go all gung-ho and try and make big changes because you're only going to set yourself up for failure and that's not loving yourself because this is about accepting yourself right where i am right now in this moment in time so always always as i say number one rule is start with the basics of self-care talk about it all the time um this really is you know your first step to implementing um a self-love journey and it's to implement a basic self-care plan um because with what i consider the basics of self-care um they may differ from other people's but when my from my point of view and i've written about them in my book the building blocks of self-care is to you know um start to meet your own basic needs on a daily basis so you know yes it is talking about eating healthy yes it is talking about taking regular exercise yes it is talking about you know upping your in intake of water and decreasing your caffeine and things like that but it's also talking about your sleep getting your sleep right getting some meditation in there to reduce your anxiety levels but also when you have that in place you can also then look at your thinking and see um you know how you're thinking and then in that also is you know people that you're interacting with um maybe looking at your financial situation and your time management um i have 12 of them in the book um that you can do and generally it's done over uh you know one at a time one little small habit in that book over a course of a month um each so each habit so you tackle sleep for a month you tackle meditation for a month and you keep building it up they're building blocks um it's really important to recognize that we meet those basic needs that basic self-care list because it's it's meeting your mental and physical health needs that you need um and keeping up with a busy lifestyle can lead to more stress as we know and the lack of sleep and eventually will lead to burnout again you're not coming from a healthy place no healthy boundaries here so that basic self-care routine is going to be one of your foundations to keeping your mental and physical health in better shape but it's also about giving yourself some time um you know you deserve better this is what we're talking about you deserve better you deserve your own love um we're very good at giving it to other people but we we fail to do that for ourselves now number two is boundaries you have to have a set of healthy boundaries in order for it to have a balanced life. So if it's if you're feeling out of sync or not centered, then the boundaries are out of place. Um, so being able to set, you know, the boundaries and limits with people is important. It's important. It's really, really important for your mental and physical health, because when we're, you know, become more stressed, we tend to forget this. We, for, you know, we default to maybe old ways, old habits and we go off center and then we've got to revisit you know what's going on here what am i where am i not setting healthy boundaries with others um maybe i'm not setting a healthy boundary with myself because you know in the book i talk about boundaries and i talk about you know starting with yourself first um and you know when we're stressed like that and we're not setting those healthy boundaries well the self-love and the self-care just goes out the window as well so re-establishing the boundaries is going to be another step on um, your road to self-love people with clear um healthy boundaries you know they have a better sense of their identity and they have a better sense of their self-worth and when you have that then you've got good self-love as well um you know that you're going to be then engaging with people in a healthy way you're going to be deleting the negative ones or minimizing your contact with those negative people um you know you're going to be able to say the no to them um, you're not afraid to ask then as well for what you need and you want and express your your own opinions. Um, if you're not feeding that self-love, if you're not looking after yourself, you're not going to be um, asking for what you need and want. You're not going to be expressing your own opinion, opinions. You're not, as I said, you're not going to feel self-confident. So 
this is why we have to take back those boundaries. We want to feel self-confident. We're, you know, as I said too about the, the mistakes, we tend to see ourselves as failures if we make even the simplest mistakes. But if you're setting those healthy boundaries and you're starting to reclaim your power, then you start to see those any sort of mistake as a learning curve. You don't see them as so personal. You don't take them on as I'm a failure. Um, and that's really, really important there with that one. Now, I've talked about boundaries before and how you can do it. I've given you lots of tips and lots. You do check out the link in the original blog. Link in the description for any any of these links are linked through the original blog. Um, and check them out because you can look at those videos. You don't have to read the blog. You can look at the videos that I've done on boundaries. I've done boundaries with yourself and then boundaries with other people. So do check those out. Um, and then, you know, remember while you're working through your uh, basic self care that I just talked about in, in the first tip, you're also learning to set healthy boundaries with yourself and with others because you're making the statement there with those um, self care items and, and saying, I'm worthy of my own time. I'm worthy of my own self care. I'm worthy to look after myself. That's what you're doing. So you're setting a boundary there. Um, you know, you're learning to take back some time from people maybe that have you running ragged. And in order to do that, in order to help with the boundaries, you really do need to review your priorities and learn to say no. And this can be really hard, particularly if you are, um, you know, so used to saying yes to people. But part of self-love is become more discerning about who and what you spend your time on. So maybe it's time, you know, to review the priorities, to delete or uh, minimize time you spend with negative people, as I said, but also to delete or delegate too many to do things on your list. Um, so, you know, as I said, you can review your boundaries. I've got a link to that as well. I've got a review. I've got a, a video I've already done on saying no and on the healthy uh healthy boundaries and deleting negative people so go and check those out if this is a really if you find any one of those issues are a big problem for you number three is about developing some self-compassion um self-compassion compassion is a foundation for self-acceptance one of the foundations as well as self-forgiveness um and self-love comes in there as well with that but you know com being compassionate with ourselves um is vital. We tend to be very compassionate towards other people um, or we think we are sometimes because we can get confused between empathy and compassion. Um, and, you know, empathy doesn't always lead to the healthiest of solutions for us, um, you know, particularly when it comes to helping ourselves and helping other people. So if we can put in the self-compassion, if we can switch the mind to self-compassion, and I've talked about that in more detail as well in another video, but if you can switch it over to self-compassion rather than empathy, um, you know, you're, you're, it's going to be a better starting point for you. It's going to be a healthier starting point, again, for dealing with other people and being compassionate towards them, but you have to really start with yourself. Um, and again, the foundation of that, of being compassionate, and as I said, it's big part of self-acceptance and that's accepting who we are for where and where we are right now in our lives is to take care of ourselves. It really is about taking care of ourselves. Again, looking at your meditation uh, that can really help with compassion, having more compassion for yourself and quieting down that inner critic, um, deleting the negative people and setting the healthy boundaries. But as I said, I've I have done a whole video on compassion and how you can build it and talk in that video. I do talk in more detail about the difference between empathy and, and compassion. And it's really important you get that right in your head. Um, another cornerstone of self-acceptance and goes hand in hand, I believe, um, with um, compassion is self-forgiveness. And that's number four on this list, um, because, you know, this is at the heart of feeling balanced, feeling centered. Um, serenity some people would use the word serenity here and the ability to move forward in your life in a healthy way it really is a fundamental part of self-love um, and we sometimes forget um, that you know we have to put ourselves on the list when it comes to forgiveness um, we can also get very confused with forgiveness 
um, you know, an awful lot of time or lack of self forgiveness, it really does hold us to the past and it can be tied up in toxic guilt and toxic shame. Um, and it can be tied up in fear as well. So we need to deal with these. We need to deal with the our issues of from the past and, and any toxic guilt and shame and fear we might feel still feel and learn to let them go. Now that is very hard work. It's also very courageous work, but it does require for the most part, it does require, um, you know, reaching out for pro professional support. So reaching out to somebody like me and it can be very quick work depending on your circumstances. But an awful lot of times you can move forward very quickly in your life and learn, um, you know, learn self forgiveness and, um, you know, learn to deal with the toxic guilt and the toxic shame and let go, let go of the past or at least live with serenity about the past um, is, uh, you know, another way you can do it. But you have to start with the self. You have to start with self forgiveness and, and, and park forgiving other people for a while. You, you, you will eventually go there, but start always with yourself. And number five, I've been harping on about this one now all throughout this video is self acceptance. Um, and self acceptance can be very much tied up in or a lack of self forget self acceptance can be very much tied up in this the false personas that we can take on um you know we we create them we all do it you know we have this you know this image that we portray when we're in work or and it may be different from when we're at home and we're different when we're friends and we're different when we're particularly fam particular a particular family member or you know we all know with the neighbors or whatever it is, but we can have these personas that we can create. Um, but, you know, in order to learn to have self acceptance and to build the self love. You know, we need to let that go. We need to let enough the toxic ones go. OK, and, you know, anybody who's your real friend, a real family member, the ones that are rooting for you, the ones that really love you, not the toxic ones. They're going to accept you when you start to let they'll still accept you when you start to let those uh, personas go. And they, and they will, um, you know, if you want to change, they will still want you. They'll still love you. They'll still, you know, very much cherish you in their lives. And they're the people you want to be nurturing. Um, you know. They don't want you to change in order to fit in. But these are things, again, we can um, pick up as children that we have to do um, certain things we have to seek external validation because we don't fit in we don't feel we fit in we don't feel good enough um, and we feel any shortfalls that we might have can be mitigated when we change ourselves to fit in with the tribe whatever that tribe is um, but you know this is false this really is a false persona because there are no shortfalls. There are no imperfections in us as people. Um, you know, it's it's an illusion that we were told that we had to be a certain way or act a certain way or whatever it was you heard um, along down the years. Um, you were told these things in order to be accepted or you took them on um, to feel, you know, all oh, right, now I can fit in. Now, I, now I'm acceptable. Um, but, you know, Oftentimes we're told we these things by people who had their own issues. Um, and, you know, we're not to blame for this. We, we took it on, particularly as children, we take these things on. Um, and it can be scary then to let them go. It, you know, you've had these and they're like defense mechanisms. We how we hold on to them, um, you know, and it can be very fearful to let go and be our real selves. Um, particularly if they've been there and entrenched for a very long time and, um, you know, to let them go and stand up for who we really are and be true to ourselves. Um, and and part of that is to accept who we are right now in this moment in time and to say, OK, I am. This is the way I am. Um, now, you if if it's very entrenched and it's and it has come from a very toxic place, you you probably will need the help of a therapist like me. Um, but you know, self-acceptance um, does get easier the more you practice it. 
And it, it does build self-love. It builds your confidence. It builds your trust in yourself. It builds respect for yourself. Because by disowning yourself like that, you're not being very respectful. Um, you know, and your self-love will, will build up. Now, again, I have a video on more detail on, on self-acceptance and how to build it. If you want to go and check that out. And number six, then, is to build your positive support. Your positive support system. Um, and, you know, I don't care who you are. Everybody needs a, a positive support system. Um, and we need four types of people in our lives. Now, they, one person can cover multiple areas, these four areas. So informational, social, tangible and emotional needs. Um, they're going to support us. This person can support us in multiple ways, depending on who they are. But these people have to come from a positive mind, uh, positive mindset frame of mind um, they have to come from their own healthy boundaries um, and you know when they do that there can be really a number of benefits when we have that support system in place um, we forget people um, when we think of a support system we think of friends family members maybe there's somebody in work that supports you um, but we forget that you know you have your doctor you can have a therapist supporting you you could have a consultant um, depending on your physical needs um, there are various people that are supporting you to keep you mentally and physically healthy outside of just the immediate family but they all have to be positive so if you're dealing with somebody in a professional even that's negative or toxic then get somebody else please go find somebody else um, you know because th there are huge benefits to your mental and physical health when you do that and your self-esteem and indeed to your overall life satisfaction that will increase when you start to put these positive support to supportive people around you rather than always having the negative the negative the negative people in your life so again you would do that slowly building those people in and therefore if you're investing time with those people then you're pushing out you don't have as much time for those negative people that always need you to just do one more thing for them or always draining you in some way shape or form um and just the last thing um i'd say here is you know investing time in ourselves first is is vital as i said it's the longest relationship you're ever going to have um you know so think about self-love and steps that you can any step that you can take and as i said there's many little tiny steps that you can take little habits that you can do on a daily basis to build self-love think of those as an oxygen mask so if you were on a plane and you didn't put on your oxygen mask well you can't help somebody else you're going to become incapacitated incapacitated like very quickly if you don't do it so my question to you is, you know, why do you think you can, can continue to push yourself further and further and further along without some self-love, without these meeting these needs and not collapse? Because believe me, if you're dealing with people who are very negative and they're only taking from you and you're not having your needs or you feel like, you know, you're martyring yourself all the time for them, um, people pleasing, you're codependent, whatever it is you are. Um, you know, if you are just constantly outputting and not inputting something back in there, um, you're going to collapse. You are going to collapse. And those people are going to wander off and find somebody else very rapidly. They probably have somebody waiting in the wings anyway. Um, so take time to consider this. Um, the next time you ignore your needs. You know, for, for your own sake, but also so that you're coming from a healthy place when you are dealing with others you know are you working from a healthy loving place when you do deal with somebody else or deal with yourself which is most important um so i will leave it there as always thank you for listening and watching um I, i'm happy to answer any questions if you have them um i will talk to you all again next week um take care watch your mental health and i'll see you soon